Hi you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time to our channel then welcome. So today I figured since I am right at the beginning of third trimester of my third fully vegan plant-based pregnancy, I would take you guys through a little day of super, super nourishing meals. So of course these apply to anyone who's looking to be plant-based or vegan, but especially during pregnancy, I am hyper-focused on hyper-nourishing. <laughs> Max just turned five, Liv is about two and a half, and baby number three should be here in just about 12 weeks. I am 28 weeks pregnant as we speak. Here, let me get up here. Here is a little bump update for you guys at 28 weeks. So just jumping into third trimester, I've been doing a lot of preparations via Christian hypnobirthing, as well as an app by Nancy Anderson. If you haven't heard of her, check out her Instagram. She's got amazing stuff. So she has a ab rehab that you can do postpartum. And she also has a move your bump app to do. It's made me more aware of everything down there to hopefully avoid things like diastasis, which I had with Max and Liv. It's natural for your abs to separate when you're pregnant, but I'm really focusing on having that good core engagement in everything that I do so that postpartum I can knit things back together more easily. I'm also taking the Christian hypnobirthing course. It's been so eye-opening. It covers everything and anything you would need to know. There's super helpful videos in there that show you visually what's happening when you're feeling a contraction and how your uterine muscles are functioning to literally do the work for you. And it's just really fascinating, everything I'm learning in this course. I also took Ellen Fisher's birth course, which was super helpful, especially the mind change section with her friend Heather, bringing up some of those past things and kind of like filling them up in a balloon and just releasing them and learning to have a totally new mindset around birth. So all of these things have been helping tremendously. As far as diet goes, we do green smoothies every morning. I was having so many aversions in first trimester and teetering a little bit into second trimester. I would say honestly, it took till about week 20 with all three pregnancies where I started to feel like, okay, I can get back into my groove, into my rhythm with the foods that I know are going to nourish me best. So until then, I didn't find a lot of relief with any of my pregnancies as far as how to solve the dilemma of morning sickness, nausea, food aversions. I always just say, listen to your body, feed it what you can eat. You just gotta get through it and just do your very best. So I did that and honestly, when you think about it, the baby is so tiny. It's going to be either taking from your stores very minimally at that stage and when nutrition really becomes more important is towards the middle and end of second trimester and of course third trimester. Thankfully I just feel like I am so in my groove with food right now. I feel like I'm loving the green juices, the smoothie bowls, my giant rainbow salads again, healthy, delicious baked goods that are full of so many delicious ingredients that the kids also love. Dusty loves them as well and my brownies. Things like our homemade waffles are another great treat during the day. Tons of fresh fruit, especially berries. They're just so antioxidant rich that you just cannot go wrong with berries. Like you can eat them to your heart's delight. And then dinners, I just try to focus on things that are really hearty, like lots of sweet potatoes and yams and lentils and chickpeas or beans and tons of veggies like onions and garlic, celery, carrot, and then maybe some curly kale torn up and sprinkled on top with lots of really delicious flavors and spices. It's just felt so right and so good and it just feels amazing to know that I'm giving myself and my baby what we both need. 
Another nutrient of extra focus and concern during pregnancy for me is iron. So things like that are also important for small kiddos. So thankfully we have found a few little hacks like our Sun Warrior Protein contains 30% iron in one scoop in the Warrior Blend thanks to the, it's a pea, goji, and hemp protein. So it's actually grain free if that's something you're looking for. It's organic, it's raw, it's unprocessed. We have links below that you can get 20% off of Sun Warrior and 30% off of their bundles. So that's one favorite way to sneak in a little extra iron and make smoothie bowls and baked goods taste really good. But as far as like whole foods that we're really focused on even more so, things like this cashew butter, we get a raw cashew butter. We can make frostings with and we just drizzle it on oatmeal and baked goods and smoothie bowls, has 10% iron in two tablespoons, dried black mulberries, they're raw and delicious and so chewy and sweet. So a small handful has about 20% of your daily iron intake, which is super good. And then of course, like I said, things like red lentils that are very easy to add into soups and stews so high in iron and protein. And of course, beans and greens are really high as well. So I would say about 90% of our days are started with a green smoothie or a wild blueberry green smoothie that might not look green, but it's still loaded with greens. And the other 10%, we do green juices. And they're, since they're lower in calories, we typically follow it or pair it with a smoothie bowl that's not a green smoothie. So we'll do our favorite pink bubblegum bowl that the kids love so much. It's like our all-time favorite. What could it be? This is kind of like our like creme de la creme, our favorite meals, like I said, nourishment during pregnancy, but also for anybody who wants to do like a really solid nourishing plant-based diet, this video is for you. This day of eating is for you. This is like our all-time favorite, like in our flow, in our rhythm. We don't need to look at recipe books. We know what we're doing, it's second nature. We can be on autopilot knowing that we're just getting what we need and we love the way it tastes. Okay, you guys, so now we are making waffles. Again, it's a Sunday. If we could eat any way every day, it would be these core recipes. So we use four cups of oats to make our batter, followed by one tablespoon of baking powder, two tablespoons of chia seeds, one tablespoon of flax seeds, and one tablespoon of hemp seeds. I also throw in a couple scoops of our favorite Sun Warrior protein that we've been using for years just to give us a little bit more of that protein, that iron, those branch chain amino acids. Once we have our dry goods blended all together, I put them in a mixing bowl and move on to our wet ingredients. So for the wet ingredients, I'm gonna use about two cups of soy milk, throw two soft and ripe bananas in there with just a little bit of maple syrup. Once you have these wet ingredients blended, you combine the two mix them all together to make your batter. And Aaron and the kids like the batter better than they like the waffles. I still prefer the waffles. So the kids and Aaron are probably gonna have themselves a bowl of batter for <laughs> breakfast, even though yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's like a batter smoothie bowl. <laughs> even though it's now just afternoon, this is basically a lunch, kind of a brunch. We do it all together it's kind of a late breakfast early lunch the kids are going to eat their batter i'm going to have some waffles we're going to get outside before the rain hits big brunch lunch and we're going to move on i've got an epic dinner coming for you guys one of our favorite recipes oldest recipes favorite of all time here is the final product this is a perfect little waffle triangle and I always recommend taking them out a little bit early. They will be so soft and they'll be better left over this way. Mm, 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 mm. Feel free to top it with some cashew butter, some maple syrup, some fresh fruit, whatever you want. Delicious. Everything you need right here. If you guys haven't already checked out below, we have a couple of amazing Eat Move Rest tools for you. 
First and foremost, we have a free seven day health transformation guide where we go over everything from how to get enough protein and build muscle, how to manage your weight, hormones, social situations, any kind of dilemma that might be plaguing you if you are trying to get healthier. I also highly recommend checking out the Eat, Move, Rest Club, which is our yearly membership. You get access to our entire ebook collection. You get access to our recipe and meal planner app. You'll also get access to our private Facebook group, which is thriving. We just finished a 14 day eat the rainbow challenge and we are now into a 14 day movement challenge. So lots of fun engagement going on there. We do weekly group Zoom calls. We just had a plant-based OBGYN and a family physician on to answer questions. The value is highly, highly stacked for the cost that you're paying. The link in the description will give you 75% off for life. I'm thinking I might have a massive rainbow salad, maybe starting with some fruit beforehand because fruit digests the most quickly. So I'll have my berries or chopped apple. Apples are so good right now. I have my giant rainbow salad. Usually I use like almost a whole head of either romaine or green leaf lettuce, and then I'll top it with every color of the rainbow. Usually some cherry or grape tomato, some red, yellow, or orange bell pepper, radishes, purple cabbage, green onion, sometimes shredded carrots, sometimes a little bit of thawed frozen sweet corn, and then I'll top it with a generous helping of sauerkraut, which is so good, rich in probiotics for your gut. And then I'll usually whip up some avocado and dollop that on top. Sometimes I'll sprinkle some dulse for added iodine if I didn't already add it in our green smoothie. Usually I hide it in the green smoothies, but it's a great source of all kinds of minerals, especially iodine, which is super important for thyroid function, hormone function, and metabolism. So making sure you get dietary iodine, dulse or sea veggies in general are the best source. And then I'll top it with coconut aminos and some nutritional yeast, which is high in protein and B vitamins. Sari Foods, the one that we use, is a non-fortified, so it's just pure and clean and it's still rich in, like I said, protein, B vitamins, and iron. It tastes amazing. So I'll mix all of that really well, toss it really good, and the reason I love the salads is because it's a meal I can sit and just enjoy. Usually I'll try to get some afternoon or evening sun sitting outside enjoying the salad, and I like that it takes time to eat it so I can just slowly munch and crunch. I try to bring a lot of awareness to how this meal is nourishing me and really take a moment to focus on gratitude and where the foods came from and like I said, what they're doing for me and my body and baby. Plant foods are generally lower in calories but higher in nutrition so you can eat a higher volume, filling your stomach completely so you can feel totally satiated on the fullness scale but you can also feel completely nourished on a macro and micronutrient level. That's the beauty of a plant-based diet. If you like to eat, if you enjoy food, colorful food, living food, this diet is for you. When I'm eating carbohydrates, they're healthy, unrefined carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables and whole grains and healthy proteins like legumes and beans and even greens. And as far as healthy fats, nuts and seeds and avocados and even some coconut or coconut milk here and there. These are all foods that are ripe in vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and antioxidants. Dinner time is always kind of Dusty's specialty, which I am so thankful for. He's an amazing cook. So I think what we're gonna do tonight is our absolute favorite red lentil slow cooker curry or stew. All right, you guys, so I am back in the kitchen. Max and I just finished an epic bike ride. It's looking a little cloudy, like it might rain, like we knew was gonna happen today. So I'm actually gonna get started on an early dinner. It's about 3 p.m., so I'm gonna put it in the slow cooker, so we'll have dinner around six or seven this evening. This is one of our all-time favorite recipes. This is our Indian slow cooker stew. For this, you will need two cups of red lentils, one large diced onion, three or four garlic cloves, two cubed sweet potatoes, one head of cauliflower, about a cup and a half of chickpeas, one cup of green peas, two tablespoons of red curry paste, one tablespoon of minced ginger, a 28 ounce jar of tomato puree, one teaspoon of turmeric, a half teaspoon of coriander, 
a half teaspoon of cumin, half teaspoon of cayenne. Now, if you don't like spicy, I would say leave the cayenne out. A quarter teaspoon of cardamom, and then salt and pepper to taste. Now, again, you can cook this on the stove top too, but I find it tastes the best and it is the easiest if you just throw it all in the instant pot like we're about to do and let it cook up for just a few hours. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within. 